So Naked and Famous recently released their Spring Summer 2023 preview and like all hierarchy loving Asians, we all love a good tier list. Okay, before I start, a small disclaimer, I've not tried any of their jeans from this season's collection yet. So this video will only rank the jeans based on how exciting and unique they are from the online images. Nothing about price or construction or any of that stuff, just on the fabric. Just because a denim is in the lower tier doesn't mean I think it's bad, only that it doesn't excite me as much. Also, this video is just a random stranger's opinion from the internet, so don't take it too seriously. Okay, the other way, let's get into it. First up, the 18 ounce Big Slub Selvage. As the name suggests, it's a relatively heavy denim with thick slubs, which gives a streaky, uneven and textured surface. If you just got into denim, I guess it's a good gateway into experiencing heavyweight or super textured denim, but it's a meh for me. I mean, do I think slubs are cool? Yes, but many other heritage brands have slubby heavyweight jeans in their catalogue, so it's nothing special here. But you know what will be interesting? Lightweight slubby denim. Anyway, like I said, it's a good entry point if you want a heavyweight slub denim, especially since Naked and Famous are usually more affordable than most Japanese prints. Better yet if they're on sale. But it's not exactly a unique take on the slubby genre. Okay, next up the all natural organic cotton selvage. Naked and Famous released a similar one, the natural seed denim, like two seasons back if I recall correctly. At 14 ounce with salvage ID and no stretch. This one definitely appeals more towards the denim head crowd compared to the first iteration at 10 ounce, no salvage and 2% stretch. This one's a year tier in my book. The Agricolor Scream Summer, although its weight is debatable for the tropics. Green ID pairs well with the undyed cotton and the flex of cotton seed is literally taking it from farm to table, or ties in this case. Overall, a great take on acro denim. So next we have the Blue J Salvage. It's 8.25 ounces, so pretty lightweight for today's standards and the white contrast stitching makes it much more casual and also reminds me of the mainline selfie. It's a good buy if you want to incorporate some vintage real road aesthetics into your fits, but like the 18 ounce big slub, I don't think it adds much to the genre, so it's a mad tier for me. Look, I'm not saying that whatever jeans Naked and Famous releases need to always be out of this world, like the king of lords, and I also get that most of the consumers will gravitate towards the safer options, but I'd rather see fewer but more unique releases rather than more generic ones like the Blue Jay. Moving on, we have the Chinese New Year Water Rabbit. It has some slubbiness but not as much as the big slub. The go ID looks great but it's otherwise pretty standard everywhere else. I'm Chinese and I've gotta say that the whole Zodiac series seems like a gimmick. Okay, gimmick is probably not the right word more like a novelty, which is kind of Naked and Famous's thing anyway. But hey, if you like the Zodiac series, then more power to you. But it's a nah for me. Okay, next we have the Double Dirty Fade Selvage. It has brown warps and wefts with the warp dyed with another layer of indigo, so it will fade to brown. I mean, it's really just an indigo denim that will fade to brown, with a brown underside that will soften the contrast of the fabric, as compared to white wefts. Nothing too crazy here, but the colours are well executed and give the denim a more rugged touch. Definitely a year tier. Next, the Dusty Rose denim, which is basically jeans in pastel pink form. It's got that preppy ivy connotations. Somehow blue warp and pastel pink weft is an awesome combo as you'll see in the Sakura Sky Selvage later. But when it becomes full on pastel pink jeans like these, I could never pull them off. But I probably could if it's in a trucker jacket form. Since we're talking about how unique the denim is, I'll put this in the mare tier. After all, they're just coloured jeans. Next up, the Elephant 11S, which is a stretch version of the Elephant 11. With the ounce, sluggy indigo warp, black and white grand drill west. The Grandrail wefts are really the highlights here. It has this static PV look on the underside, and the white wefts peeking through the warp reminds me of the Matrix coat. Definitely a denim I can get behind, so it goes into the year tier. Okay, next, the Hard and Soft Selvage. I'm a little biased here, but I'm a big fan of brands mixing up different length of fibers, so the Hard and Soft Selvage goes into the cool tier for me. The long staple American and Peruvian cotton wefts provide strength and comfort, while the short staple cotton warps give a fluffier and rugged texture. This denim proves that you don't need to rely on crazy colours to be different, simply quality materials made tastefully and it will become subtly unique. In a way, I say it's kinda like sushi and sashimi where all you need are quality ingredients. Next, we have the Kiko denim. Sometimes, well many times, slummy or nappy denim is all you're getting when brands say that their denim is super textured, which can get boring quickly. So the hexagonal pattern on the Kiko denim is a positive in my book. The raised Kiko texture will fade faster than its unraised base, so I'm looking forward to the high contrast fades on this potential fade monster. As far as indigo jeans go, it's pretty out there, but I can see this being a pair of versatile jeans. It goes into the cool tier. Moving on, the lightweight recycled selvage. I'm not a fan of stonewashed jeans, like ever 
flavor because of how inauthentic it generally looks, but this one's a fresh take. It's made partly from shredded yarns which gives it stone wash color, but because it's not technically stone wash, there's minimal fading on the fabric and seams to start off, which gives a more uniform but still textured look. It's a cool concept and I can see this being popular, but it's not my style personally. But it's exciting enough to be in the year tier. Okay, we're down to the last four pairs. For the Midnight Slub Stretch Salvage, it's going to the Mare Pau. I mean, it's just slavy indigo denim with black wefts, so nothing out of the ordinary. It's great if you like that black undertone look, but it's not exactly a head turner or a conversation starter. Next, coming in just a touch heavier than the Blue J at 8.75 ounces, the New Frontier Salvage is the second most lightweight pair for this season. It has that iconic vintage mid blue wash, but it's an otherwise generic denim. It's not bad, but nah, I'll pass. Next, the Recycled Kimono Weft Salvage. The concept is like the recycled stone blue salvage, only for this it's using kimonos and darker indigo yarns. I know Naked and Famous previously released a kimono print denim but I kinda see that it's not my cup of tea. But this, I like and I can see it having broader appeal. It looks ordinary from a distance, but look a little closer and you can see the colourful nips, which are made partly from kimono yarns. Subtle and snack-worthy for sure. Finally, we're down to the Sakura Sky Selvage. Naked and Famous previously made a similar light blue denim, I believe it's called the Summer Sky Selvage, and also a pink wear denim in the form of the Sakura Stretch and Hanami Selvage. So put the two together and you have the Sakura Sky Selvage. Whereas the hard and soft selvage is cool because of its use of contrasting yarns, the Sakura Sky Selvage is cool because of its combination of vibrant colours. It's not the most innovative jeans in the Naked and Famous universe, but it's cool and wearable pair of jeans nonetheless. And that's all I have. Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. Again, no hate to Naked and Famous, there's no brand doing what they're doing, and I'm always eagerly waiting for their new releases. Like this video and subscribe if you want to see more fashion content, and as always, stay subtle.